Hello and welcome to Quick Solutions All India Akas Test Series J Advanced 2021 Test 2A Paper 1 Physics. Let's go to question number 1. Question 1 says two particles 1 and 2 each of mass m are moving with velocity v0 and 2v0 respectively along the line x equal to minus d and y equal to 2d as shown. If L i j represents angular momentum of particle i with respect to point j as shown in figure, then this figure is given to us and then there are four options about angular momentum of different particles about different points. So let's start evaluating the options. Option A says L1P is this much. So let's find the value of L1P. So the first option is about L1P. L1P is actually position vector of 1 respect to point P cross P and P here is equal to mv0 j cap. So what about R1P here? R1P vector is actually equal to minus d minus 2d i cap that means minus 3d i cap and if its y coordinate is y then it's simply plus y j cap cross mv0 j cap. The cross product is simply minus 3d mv0 k cap, right? So it's minus 3d mv0 k cap. The other term will be 0. So if we look at the option, option A is correct. It is matching with this. So that means A is a correct option. Let's now look at option B. Option B says L1 O vector. So let's evaluate L1 O vector. And this is again position vector of 1 with respect to point 2 cross mv0 j cap. What about R1 O? Well, R1 O is simply minus d i cap plus y j cap. So this is L1 O then is equal to minus d i cap because O is the origin plus if its y coordinate is a let's say y j cap cross mv0 j cap. We can see that y is variable bit but it does not really matter because the cross product of that term will be 0 with mv0 j cap and what we get finally is minus mv0 k cap minus mv0 d k cap. So this is also matching with b. So b is also a correct option. Let's look at L2O. Option C and D are about L2O vector. So let's evaluate L2O. And this is position vector of 2 respect to point 2 cross linear momentum of 2 respect to O and that is equal to well we can see that the velocity is minus 2 v0 i cap so it is and the mass is m so this is equal to m 2 m v0 minus i cap now what is r2 position vector of 2 respect to o well the x coordinate is variable but y coordinate is fixed here so this is we can write it as x i cap plus y coordinate is fixed and that is equal to 2d. So it's 2d j cap cross 2 mv0 minus i cap. So the cross product of first term will be 0 and the second term is going to give us k cap because j cap cross i cap is minus k cap but the minus uh, term is already there. So it is 4 mv0 d k cap which is matching with option d. Option d is correct and option c is incorrect. So that means for question 1 a, b and d are the correct options. a, b and d are the correct options for question 1. Let's now move on to the next question. Question 2 says 
a hollow cylinder of uniform density of mass 50 kg is placed on a rough horizontal surface as shown. A horizontal pull F equal to 200 Newton is exerted to cylinder due to which acceleration of its topmost point P and angular acceleration comes out to be A and alpha respectively. Choose the correct options. Assume pure rolling and the options are about the value of alpha, the value of frictional force and acceleration of the topmost point A. So obviously the question is from the topic uh, rotation and in fact in rotation it's on rolling without slipping. Well the first thing that we do is find the moment of inertia of the cylinder about its axis which we write as IO and expression of IO will be integral R square dm which we can further write as R square dm here is mass of an element and that is equal to 2 pi R L rho dr and the limit of small r will go from capital R to 2 times capital R. Let's evaluate this. This I O then is coming out to be equal to 2 pi rho L and then we have integral of R q dr. So, we will get 1 by 4 R to the power 4 limits are R capital R and 2 times capital R and also putting rho is equal to mass by volume and that volume is pi 2 r whole square minus r square that means 3 r square into L. So, by putting this value of rho and putting the limits we find I O is simply equal to 5 m r square by 2. The value of m and r of course are given to us. Let us now evaluate alpha. Let us evaluate the option A. So, of course, the friction will be acting in this case towards right because the this point of contact will have a tendency to slip towards left. So, if we take torque about point D, the point of contact, we can say that torque about point B is equal to F into R and this torque will be in the anti-clockwise sense. So, the alpha should be in this sense. And since it is rolling without slipping, let us say the linear acceleration is capital A of the center. So, torque about point B is FR and that is equal to moment of inertia about axis through B which is equal to IO plus 4 MR square using the parallel axis theorem into alpha. This gives us the value of alpha as FR divided by so, this will be 13 by 2 mr square. Let us put the values now. It is 2 into 200 divided by 13 into 50 into 0 0.3 SI units. And this is simply, if you evaluate, this is 80 by 39 radian per second square. So, this is 80 by 39 radian per second square. That means option A is correct. Let us now evaluate the value of frictional force. To do that, we write the equation F minus friction is equal to mass into capital A and this gives us the value of friction is equal to capital F minus capital M into capital A. The value of F is 200 Newton, mass of course is 50 kg and the value of A is 2 times alpha R that means it is equal to 2 into 80 by 39 into 0 0.3. Well, this is 1800 by 30 Newton. That means option B is correct and option D is incorrect. Let us now look at the value of acceleration of the topmost point P. So, A is clearly 2 times of A and that means its value is 2 into 2 into 0 0.3 into 80 by 39 meter per second square. Well, this is not matching with option C. So, that means for question 2, options A and B are correct. Let us now go to the next question. Question 3 says, consider a planar object in XY plane 
two forces F1 equal to AI cap plus BJ cap and F2 equal to CK cap are acting on this planar object at point P and Q respectively. If tau FIP represents torque of force Fi along P axis then and the four options are given. This is the figure given. So let's evaluate option A first, right? Now to find torque about an axis, the theory we know is first we can find torque about a point on the axis and then look at the component of that torque along the axis. That's the way we are going to go about this problem. So to find tau F1 Y, let's first find tau torque of force F1 about the origin, okay? And to do that, we need to take R cross F. In this particular case, R will be simply since we have taken origin as the reference. Okay, so since the body is in the XY plane, let's take the coordinates of point P as XP I cap plus Y P J cap. So the torque will be then XP I cap plus Y P J cap cross F. And that F here is AI cap plus BJ cap. Well, we can see that this is along the Z axis, either negative Z axis or positive Z axis. That the, the point is that this torque, if at all it is there, if it is not zero, then its value is along the Z axis. And uh, so we can write this is along the Z axis. That is what is important right now. So that means this component along y axis is 0. So this is a correct option. Torque of F1 about y axis is 0 is correct. Now what about torque of F1 along x axis? Well, this is also 0 because it has only z component can have. It just cannot have x component or y component. So option B is also correct. Let's look at option C. It says magnitude of component of torque of F1 taken about 0, 0 d and 0, 0, minus 2D. Well, you can see that both these two points are on the Z axis and torque of F1, whether we take about this point or about this point along the Z axis, it will be same. That is a torque along the Z axis. So option C is also correct. Let's look at option D now. It says torque of F2 along X axis is 0. Well, to find torque of F2 about Z axis, we again first evaluate torque of F2 about the origin. So torque of F2 about the origin will be again, let's say XQ I cap plus YQ J cap because Q is the point where the force is acting cross F2 which is CK cap and if I look at this, this is minus XQC J cap plus YQC I cap. It does not have a Z component and which means this is also a correct statement. Let's go to the next question now. Question 4 says when a rubber band is stressed by a distance X, it exerts a restoring force of magnitude F equal to 2X squared. The elastic potential energy is stored in the wire when it has elongation delta L is U, all quantities are in SI units. And work done by restoring force is negative. Well, the band is being stressed. So the work done by restoring force will be negative because the direction of displacement of point of application force and the direction of force itself are opposite to each other. So option A is clearly correct. And the other options are about the value of u. Well, the value of u will be then negative of work done by the restoring force minus of work done by the restoring force. Let's call it wr. And that means it is equal to integral 2x square dx where x goes from 0 to delta L according to the question. And this is 2 by 3 delta L cube. Well, if you look at the options, it is matching with option D. So, D is correct. B and C are not correct. Well, let's go to the next question now. 
Question 5 says, if B is the bulk modulus and eta is the shear modulus for an ideal liquid, then eta is 0, eta is infinite, B is 0, B is infinite. Well, we know B is defined as minus V dP by dV and an ideal liquid is incompressible. So, dV will always be 0. That means B will be infinite. So, B is infinite is correct and C is incorrect and we also know that an ideal liquid cannot apply a shear force. So, that means eta is 0 is also a correct option. Pretty simple, isn't it? Let's go to the next question now. 